so hello everybody. Uh, to present myself, my name is Anna Branson and I'm a PhD student um, in geography at the University of Savoie Blanc in France. And in my research, I uh, concentrate I work on heritageization process and heritage production discourses within World Heritage Serial Sites. Uh, more specific, specifically, I work on prehistorical dwelling sites around the Alps, a World Heritage Sites, since um, 2011. So with my presentation, I would like to highlight some specificities of serial sites, especially from geographical points of view, considering the way they produce uh, and reinvent the concept of space and place in archaeology. I hope this will get uh, your attention and maybe open a debate on how, uh, so on the ways um, of specialization uh, the heritage uh, and how this influences the way of managing the archaeological um, the archaeological sites. So um, the first inscriptions on the list um, of the World Heritage happened in 1978, and already by 1979. Um, only for the region, so speaking only for the region of Europe and North America, out of 32 um, properties inscribed, 23 <coughs> were cultural, of which eight were already of serial, um, of serial category. So serial properties composed of more than two spatially, uh, spatially separated elements. So then the first recognition of the, of the serial sites uh, came only a year later, in 19, uh, 1980, when it was recognized by the text of convention that uh, the state parties may propose a single uh, nomination um, of a series of cultural properties that are, uh, so the series that is related because of belonging to the same historical cultural group or the same type of property, um, but provided that such a series, um, that the series is, as a whole is of outstanding value and not um, and not individual sites uh, itself. Um, also, uh, such selection of sites um, has to take into account the possibility of effective management of the whole, uh, and the constitution of a uh, management group is highly recommended. So, where do we stand uh, with serial sites in 2019? Uh, only um, in so uh, only in the European Union of 28 uh, countries, there are 350 um, World Heritage cultural properties, of which more than one third is actual serial. Which means that uh, so uh, namely it means uh, 121 properties are serial, serial composed of two or more uh, separated elements. Most of them are of national. Uh, or regional geometry, such as, for example, the 20 case of uh, the um, Paleolithic cave art of northern Spain. Uh, but, but 16 of them is transboundary, uh, such as, for example, uh, the case of 12 sites of heritage of Mercury uh, located in Spain and uh, Slovenia. This, uh, these sites, as we can um, imagine, they, will, they face a certain level of challenges which are proper to their serial nature. Um, as said before, a common management plan is necessary, and um, should it be for uh, national or international serial property. As, um, and for this, uh, for its execution, an organization of a management group is strongly recommended. The challenges of managing such a serial site is that with the multiplication of component sites within a serial property, um, this one gets composed of sites in different administrative units, um, that, uh, which provokes that the fact that by, the, um, so by their local uh, policy, cultural policies, the sites will have different, different effective protections um, and uh, they, will, they, they have different uh, protection statuses which will also um, later on um, impact the different interpretations of what is a site management. So the question that we ask ourselves is how uh, these differences um, firstly reflect in the specialization of the heritage site and which uh, are then uh, later their impacts on the heritage perception. So here I would like to, uh, to make the, the link with what Cynthia was saying before 
is that in the in the time of the you know of the, of the setting of uh, the inscription uh, of the heritage world heritage property, we have this authorized as you call it the authorized uh, heritage discourse that will later be uh, adopted by the by the site um, managers who are not necessarily um, archaeologists and uh, will also uh, impact the perception of the World Heritage Sites for the public. Um, to illustrate this, I would like to show you three examples of uh, different serial properties, each composed of more than 100 archaeological elements, all three of them situated in, uh, in Europe. So the first one I would like to evoke is um, the serial property of frontiers of the Roman Empire, Limes, a transboundary serial property of 414 uh, sites um, in uh, UK and Germany. Geometries of these sites uh, differ from one German state to another, but also between the, between the countries. For example, in Bavaria, in Bavaria state, in German Bavaria, uh, state of Bavaria, Bavaria, it is mostly a rectilinear uh, core zone with little buffer zones um, that can even be, as we see uh, here, individually inscribed without their core zone. In the states, in the German state of Hesse, um, the rectilinear uh, core zone is protect, protected by a fairly more consequent buffer zone. In, uh, in the state of Rhineland, the core zone seem to, to correspond to the actual archaeological remains with corresponding, corresponding buffer zones. What happened then later in England is that in England they decided to make uh, an entire buffer zone for one um, for, for the whole of uh, 194 different core zones, so different sites, one nine, uh, 109 uh, four sites that make the, um, the that that uh, that are inscribed in 414, but they have the common common buffer zone. Um, so what um, within this case, the difference observed with the spa spatial uh, spatial conceptualization of the case opens question of what is actually considered as the limes, the physical remains or the, let's say, the hypothetical archaeological remains as we is, is, it's supposed with, uh, with um, rectilinear um, core zone in, in certain German regions. The difference in precision of core and buffer zones opens questions on its coherence as a whole and the message that is later on transmitted by its heterogeneous spatial construction. The second um, example I would like to talk about it is the national serial property of rock art of the Mediterranean basin on the Iberian Peninsula, composed of 758 sites inscribed in 1998. In some cases, the same physical site, or the rock shelter, uh, we can say, it, is inscribed as three different sites out of 758. Uh, for its different rock art type, namely here, for example, we have three sides depending on its uh, of whether uh, there are deer figures, zoomorphic figures, or one with, for example, fourteen geometrical figures. So, within the same property, we can have another example of five different rock art shelters within the same buffer zone, which are inscribed as five different sites out of 758, within still the same, the same buffer zone. Also, within the same property, we will find one buffer zone with three different rock all shelters, but with, we, which again will represent eight sites out of seven, 758. So this example of the serial property shows us again a heterogeneity of site definition that can lead in a way to the loss of transparency of what is considered as a site in archaeology, whether in this case would it be a rock shelter, a group of same art sign presentation, or maybe something else. And the last example that I would like to show you is um, the case of prehistorical pile dwelling site, which is a uh, um, serial property of 111 sites inscribed in 2011 that we, that we find in six different country, countries. So there are, for example, uh, examples of um, one archaeological site with its precise 
a core zone and, and buffer zone, or we can have also the sites where in the same uh, in the same site we will have some associated sites that can be found either within the buffer or within within the core zones. Also, um, we can have rather complex sites still within the same serial serial property uh, within um, within uh, within which we can we can have two core zones with one buffer zone, or we can have, for example, even up to a few dozens. Of, uh, of sites that will be associated um, either within the buffer or the core zones. So the, this, uh, this phenomena in a way complexifies the lecture of what is actually inscribed and protected, uh, pr protected heritage site in the serial property, whether is it one archaeological site, one archaeological layer, an inscribed area, a core zone, a buffer zone, and it really depends on each country's and each region's legislation and uh, heritage heritage perception. So, to to conclude on this presentation and not to make it be too too long, I would like to um, I would like to conclude on the on the fact that mapping and and spatial definition of archaeological site uh, during inscription process is an important step when inscribing the invisible and especially for the archaeological archaeological heritage the invisible archaeological sites in space protection parameters of core and buffer zones in the way create them and contribute to their comprehension and um, and transmission to the, to the site managers or the public. The heterogeneity of definition can there, therefore provoke a losing of transparency of what is an archaeological site and the understanding of World Heritage property. Specifically, uh, and I think it's important to, to emphasize, for the non-archaeological um, site managers and, uh, and the general public. So therefore, a clear definition uh, of, of elements and of what is defined and is considered as a, as a site is important during the, in the, the inscription process, which, um, which facilitates setting out a coherent, um, a long-term management system and also a cohesion uh, among managing bodies. Uh, this already have to overcome overcome and deal with differences in level of protections and differences in administration seriality. So there is really an important step to take to, to homogenize uh, at least the vocabulary um, uh, in, during, the, during the inscription process. So I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Good job.